the challenges we have with MDM is the fact that um, you know, in certain software or technology areas, like it's usually like one really narrow, consistent problem that you're just trying to solve really well. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but in MDM, there is seemingly unlimited uh, business challenges that we can solve, um, business problems we can solve, um, and they vary greatly by industry, by, name, by uh, domain, and, and by use case. And so what's nice about that, obviously, is that there's a ton of opportunities we have to help um, our prospects and customers provide business value. Um, the challenge we have is that from a marketing and, and, uh, and messaging perspective, um, it's very, very hard to sometimes speak to someone's specific pain when we're talking about MDM more generally. So we like to talk about is some of the, the kind of the, the most common things that we see um, from a use case perspective um, by some of the most common domains and by some of the, the, the industries that we, we, we uh, work with the most. So now let's talk about the product domain. Um, and when we look at product, and, and this is, is, is Gartner's terminology used to describe it, but there's really two flavor, you know, every company has customers, every co company also has products, right? They're selling something, whether it's time or physical goods, et cetera, um, services. Um, there's really two flavors of product if you wanted to classify them broadly. And again, this is from Gartner. There's, there's buy side product and sell side product. So buy side product would be, um, we're a distributor or a retail company. We don't make anything per se. We're buying things from other companies that do make them. We get the finished good in our distribution uh, warehouse or in our retail stores. And what we're trying to maintain is just all the information we need to know about that product in order for us to then go sell it to whoever our end customer is. Um, the, 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 the sell side product is I'm an organization that we actually manufacture things. We come up with new ideas. Um, we need to man maintain all the information about the finished good, as well as a lot of information about how that finished good is made. Um, this could be, you know, obviously a manufacturing company that makes makes you know manufactures some sort of uh, uh, you know industrial or consumer good would count. But also we have customers that are you know, they're they're managing recipes that go on a menu of a restaurant, right? Well, you know, a burger and all the information about the recipe for making that burger would be um, all that information on that sell side of, of, of the product domain. Yeah, no, and I think it's, it's really important too to understand that entire process that comes into it of, of, of you're gonna take something and then you're gonna value add to it, right? Whether it's raw materials or it could be finished goods that you're gonna add value to with services or something like that. And so it's, it's very important to understand those domains and to understand what's important. As you were talking, uh, alluding to before, I think it's very important in certain businesses that I can very much understand the description of that product so I can understand like receivables, right? So I understand, well, I might not have this exact product, but over here I have a 10 inch Bluetooth speaker. And so the 10 inch Bluetooth speaker might be a, a fungible asset between these two organizations. Um, and understand you know, who's producing that at good and, and where I can uh, receive that same good from. All right, so when you look at the, the use cases across these two categories, um, on one hand, um, it's typically focused on um, kind of the, the reducing the time frame from initial idea to we're, we're successfully manufacturing, making this thing and selling it, right? So it's, you know, you have product management and engineering and other roles within the organiza organization that are all part of that process. And so the use case there is, 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 is using MDM to um, either have accurate materials information that engineering can use to determine how we're gonna make something, or you could be storing the bill of material, you could be storing um, specifications for how you're gonna make something. All of that is information that can be stored in MDM, and we can, we can help facilitate that process and, and, and take it from what's oftentimes a manual Excel spreadsheet, Word document-based process via email to something that's driven centrally by an application that's divvying out responsibilities along the way. Um, on the other side of it um, is, you know, organizations will struggle with, well, you know, we can buy sand from a number of different organizations, it's a commodity, it's a material, or I could buy, you know, thinking of some of, we had a customer that was a software distributor, I can buy the same server from a number of different channels, or I can buy the same software from a number of different channels. What is my cost to acquire it from, you know, a ton of sand is $15 here and $20 there. Well, if they're equivalent products, let's go, let's go buy it or source it from the less expensive source, 
or if I can buy this software or a server that I'm ultimately then going to sell to my end customer, if I can buy it for 20% from that company, um, or if I take the 10 I was buying from each and say, hey, if I buy 20 from you now, will you give me a discount? So it's all about becoming more efficient in how you both buy or acquire the products that you're ultimately going to sell to your end customer, um, as well as having accurate information about describing it, right? Let's all agree that we're going to describe this one ton of sand the same way because it's fundamentally one ton of the same kind of sand. Um, and that way we also can then hopefully have better analytics and understanding of what ultimately we're purchasing. So those are two of the um, most common use cases we see on e kind of each uh, type of product implementation. Yeah, and we've seen uh, other companies that when you're on the uh, the sell side of it and you're, and you're taking these products, you can take the same product and you can package it in many different ways, right? And this is this is probably true for generics, it's true for uh, selling carpets or things like this. And so I'm going to take one finished good and I'm going to give it different names and different uh, warranties and different products and, and send that out the door as, as different pieces. Yeah, so can, it's important for that. I can sell peanut butter. I can t t sell jelly. I could shrink wrap them together and I could sell them together. That's a whole new product, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. And again, it's managing all of those different things and pricing schemes for that. And it's, it's really about managing that workflow from having the idea to and, and its inception all the way to uh, selling that out at the thing. Yeah. The other piece about product that I think we've seen is, uh, is about with, with where that's being sold, that information can also be passed back to me. Like, where is it on, this, on the store shelves? How is that being packaged? And understanding um, how we're being successful in selling that, whether it's bottom shelf, top shelf, middle shelf, and, and really uh, understanding that. Because there's a lot of data that's now coming back from large retailers as, as more of this, uh, this data is being ca ca captured. And, and uh, being able to leverage that data within your organization uh, is very key. And it's important to have uh, standards and processes around that to be able to leverage it. Yeah. And I actually got a, a discussion going the other day with an oil and gas company about um, telemetry. Yep. That's actually a whole new, you know, not new, but it's a, it's a brand new set of information we can start to consider inside MDM use cases. Um, and the other example that we were discussing was around substitutable products. So they, have, they were thinking about kits of products. So your peanut butter and your jelly, you wouldn't substitute one for the other but you might know that they go along together as an, as an assortment or as a kit. Or you might say, hey, it could be crunchy or creamy peanut butter. Oh, that's we true. You can live with the yeah. crunchy and the creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Come on, there's always one you like better. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm one of those people who just doesn't really get along with peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> or none, I guess yeah. that's it. Yeah, or none. So you just buy the jelly. <laughs> just the jelly. Just yeah, the jelly. Kind of sad sets right. for him. Yeah. All right, so hopefully that gives everybody an idea of, of you know, the most common use cases we see for, for managing product data. Yep.